What is your name, please? My name is David Johnston. My name is David Johnston. My name is David Johnston. Only one of these men is the real David Johnston. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening Bob. Oh, everybody's feeling right on top of the heap tonight. <laughs> All right, while you're still there and feeling that energetic, open up that envelope, if you will, and follow along in this first story. I, David Johnston, am on the last leg of an around-the-world auto trip. My partner and I have made the entire journey in a tiny British car which sports 10-inch wheels and a 42-horsepower engine. In order to finance the trip, we worked as bricklayers, stockmen, truck drivers, and bartenders. Currently, we are both working at the Tower of London in the International Plaza of the New York World's Fair. Our job is to act as beefeaters and help guard the $100,000 collection of replicas of the British Crown Jewels. Signed, David Johnston. These three gentlemen all claim to be David Johnston. I guess you could call him a round-the-world beef eater. Let's start this questioning with Peggy Cat. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, who designed your costume? Uh, I think someone in the 15th century in England. I'm not quite uh -huh. sure who it was. Uh, <laughs> number three, there's, a, there's a, a jewel in the Royal Crown Jewels named after Edward the Black Prince. What kind of a stone is that? I don't know. Uh, do you know number one? The Black Prince is... I don't know. Do you know number two? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, number two, what kind of a car is with this weeny teeny car that you had? It's an Austin Mini Minor. An Austin Mini Minor? Yes. Oh. And uh, uh, number three, who killed the two little princes in the Tower of London? Don't know. Don't they make you study up on the Tower of London, number two, at the Tower no. of London? <laughs> Number two, you answer? Yeah, well, I guess he's not going to answer. Number three. one, did you kill the two princes in the tower of London? <laughs> I'm not that old. They didn't do it, huh? <laughs> Number two, this mini, mini minor, is that any relation to the mini cab? Oh, mini you... cab, yes, mini cabs use mini minors, I believe, in London. Mini cabs use mini minors with 10 inch wheels. All right. Uh, number uh, three, why does it say ER on your, uh, the front of your thing there? It's Elizabeth Rex. Ah, that's class. Number one, why are you called beef eaters? It derives from an old uh, term called birth eater. Oh, is that true? Mm -hmm. It wasn't because you had more uh, meat to eat during the lean days of the kingdom, eh? Unfortunately, no. Uh, number Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number two, are you a real beef eater um, uh, in London as well? No, I'm a replica of a beef eater. Like that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why they don't know those things. Mm. Uh, number one, number two, what, what is in the collection? The crown jewels and some armor, some medals, and diamonds. Number three, where is the Koh-i-Noor? It's in London. The copy is in the tower here. In the what? The diamond is in London, but the copy is in the tower here. I see. Uh, number one, where did you serve as a, as a bricklayer? In Australia. And, and where did, well, number two, where were you a cattleman? On a sheep ship, it wasn't the cattle, it was sheep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Number three, how, how far can you go in this car in a day? Mm, about 500 miles, if it's a 24-hour day. 500 miles a day. That's Tom Poston. Thank you. Number one, your costume is slightly different from the other two fellows. Is there any particular reason for that? Yes, I uh, have the honor to be a uh, yeoman of the guard. Well, congratulations. <laughs> uh, Number three, do you know the more powerful car of the Mini Miner? No, I'm What it's of... called? No. Same car, but more powerful. Do you know number two? I do. It's a Mini Cooper, I think you mean. Uh, number two, how do you cut a brick in half? You drop it. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's all the time we have. I'm sorry to say. Let's leave it on the broken brick. <laughs> and mark your ballots at once, if you will, please, panel, without change once you have marked, and, of course, without any consultation whatsoever. Simply vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All right. And, of course, our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all the uh, ballots marked, panel, everyone? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. Uh, he looks sizable enough to be uh, that fellow, and you don't cut a brick in half by dropping it for heaven. <laughs> well, you can, but you don't know how it's going to be. Thank you, Cat. I voted for number two. Number one looks too big for Minnie Minor. He's quite a big seller for such a little teeny weeny car. <laughs> and I figured that that's the way I'd break a brick, so I voted for number two. <laughs> Orson Bean, your choice. Well, number three, <laughs> I, I think they... I can't imagine them hiring him if he wasn't born to it. He looked like the Mad Hatter in that uh, hat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I liked what number two said about being uh, right huh. fast about being a replica, so I voted for him. All right, and Kitty. I voted for number two. Number I've two. never tried to cut a brick in half, but I figure that's the way they do it in Australia, for all I know. Mm -hmm. And I thought number two looked like the right size for a beef eater, even for a replica. And um, so I voted for number two. All right, that makes it uh, close to unanimous, doesn't it? There were three for number two, one for number one. With that, let's find out which one of them is the real one. And I can really think of no better way to point out which of these three gentlemen is the real round the world beef eater but hey. meeting David Johnston's partner, Jeremy Barr. <laughs> Jeremy, would you do us a and point out your partner, please? He's going to chop his head off. <laughs> 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 See, they've got around the car all the places they've been. They're keeping their own little running uh, indication. The last one was the world. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> oh, my, my. That is a mini, 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 isn't it? Well, we thank you. We wish you much success with the continuation of your tour when your present tour of duty, I should say, is over at the World's Fair. Uh, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do, sir? My name is Peter Evans, and I represent the International Editions of Life magazine. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is John Bastin, and I'm an employee at the Lamont Geological Observatory of Columbia University. Well, we checked the score and we find that the panel was a little bit smart to start things off tonight. They had three correct, but one incorrect at $250. And may it bring you great joy, gentlemen. We thank you for sharing your evening with us and hope you had fun, too. Uh, of course, that money comes to you by way of Winston Cigarettes, our sponsor, as does a carton of Winston's waiting for you on the way out. Good night, and God bless you. All right, panel, rest easy now, and let's all look at this brief film. Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Viola McMillan. My name is Viola McMillan. My name is Viola McMillan. All right, panel, once again, will you follow along with me as I read? I, Viola Macmillan, am president of the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada. I am also an active mining prospector myself. I have been engaged in every phase of the business, from grub staking and swinging a pick to organizing and bringing the mines into production. Among my more successful strikes have been the Viola Mac mine in Porcupine, Ontario, the Lake Cinch, a uranium mine in Saskatchewan, and Windfall, a property in the Timmins area adjacent to the recent Texas Gulf sulfur strike. Over the years, I have discovered and developed mines which up to now have produced over $40 million worth of ore. Signed, Viola Macmillan. 
Panel, as you heard me say, these ladies all claim to be Viola Macmillan, mining prospector. Let's start this cross-examination with our own mining prospector, Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, Viola, Viola Macmillan, number uh, one. Uh, tell me about Porcupine, Ontario. What does one do with a balmy evening in that splendid town? Well, How you pass the long night there? <laughs> On a balmy evening in a town like Porcupine, you just sit and swap stories. Oh, well, that's not bad. That's, uh, uh, number uh, three, uh, some years ago, I bought 100 shares of Eureka Uranium, which recently had a four-way reverse split. I think it's uh, <laughs> sell for something less than a nickel. Uh, uh, do, you know, <laughs> do you know where this uh, splendid property is located? Yes, it's in northern Ontario. Ah, number two. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> I'm glad you found out where your, where your mind was. <laughs> uh, number two, I hear the prices around the Timmins area uh, after the strike uh, jumped a great deal. What is land selling for there now per acre? It depends on where you're looking for ground. Well, near <laughs> the Texas uh, sulfur strike. Some have paid as high as $100,000 in stock on top of that for a group of 12 claims. Thank you. Uh, number three, what does grub staking mean? It means staking for someone else, staking on assignments. Oh, for someone else. That's number right. one, the Timmins area has been a lot in the news. Now, I hear that people have been going up there in helicopters and so forth. Uh, what is the purpose of that? Well, sometimes uh, uh, they take the electromagnetic device, which will show them uh, what area they will find uh, ore. And they want to get there in a hurry. Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number two, you, you must know about assaying uh, gold uh, and so forth. Do you, number two? I know a little about it, yes. Well, how would an assayist extract enough gold from a piece of, uh, of uh, ore, for instance, to tell how, how valuable that ore might be? Well, you usually have it assayed at an uh -huh. assay office. Thank you. Number three, how does the assayist extract the gold from that, from a piece of stone like that? He, I can't answer that. Uh, well, number one, in other words, what I'm saying is how does he know how much gold there is in a piece of stone? Well, how does he, he might put it through certain chemical uh, baths uh -huh. and, no. ex and extract the, the odd material. Thank you, Kat. Uh, number three, how much gold should I assay to a ton of ore? We don't figure it that way. If our operating costs are about $9 for a ton, and we come out on top of that, we uh, think we make money. And number two, what is the price per ounce of gold in the United States? Around $35 an ounce. Uh, number one, where is the Masabi iron mine? In Montana. Uh, number, number three, in order to stake a claim, how much land must you stake? What's the minimum amount of land that has to be staked? You take 160 acres and it's broken into three or four 40 acre parcels. Thank you. That's it. Time for you now to stake your claims. Mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel. Mark them at once, please, without any change sure. once you've marked. And of course, no consultation. Vote, if you will, for number one, number two, or number three. Are all ballots marked? They are now, and so, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. She looked richer than the other two. Peggy, <laughs> <laughs> what is your choice? I voted for number three, because, you know, when she said she, didn't, she couldn't answer the question, I felt like she had secret information she couldn't divulge. <laughs> so I thought she was the one. Orson, which one do you think it is? Well, she, uh, number three does have secret information. She knows where the Eureka uranium mine is, so I didn't vote for her. And, uh, <laughs> uh, number, uh, I was torn between one and two, but uh, number one had a little information about porcupine, uh, wherever it is, so I voted for her. Is the Eureka uranium mine one of your makeup? I don't remember exactly the name. I have some, uh, some <laughs> stuff. Uh, I have it up on my wall. In the <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, which was your choice? I'm always taken in by Orson. I <laughs> voted for number three because I figured she knew where his mind was. <laughs> <laughs> Irving Weinspar is the yeah. prospect. That's all I can tell you. To the floor again. <laughs> Very well, that splits it as widely as it can come. With four voting for three, there were two for number three, one for number one, one for number two. And let's ride with that and find out now which of these ladies is the real mining prospector.
Will the Real, Viola Macmillan, please stand up. <laughs> well, that's a, a busy field you've put yourself into, but you've certainly made a success of it. And I wish you continued success. Thank you. Also did very well at fooling our panel tonight. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My real name is Elizabeth Allen, and I'm secretary to Milton Kestenberg, an attorney. And you just uh, gave him a million dollars worth of publicity, so hit him for a raise when you go back to work. <laughs> Thank you. I will. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Jean Brown Kinney, and I am an author, and my latest book is The Neurotic Inanimate. <laughs> the Neurotic Inanimate. <laughs> That's a great title, The Neurotic Inanimate. I'll go for that one, regardless of what, what it's about. Oh, well, ladies, you did real well. Believe me, you did. There were one, two, three incorrect votes, and that times uh, $250 is a $750 winning stake you have there. That coming to you from Winston Filter Cigarettes and a carton of Winston's anyway. Uh, thank you, ladies, for joining us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> we'll put the panel back to work in just a minute. Meantime, here's something you'll enjoy. All right, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Bobby Hill. My name is Bobby Hill. My name is Bobby Hill. Panel, please follow along with this story. I, Bobby Hill, was recently suspended and forced to resign from the Nashville, Tennessee Police Department for drunkenness and disorderly conduct. I was in disgrace with my friends and family. I managed to get a job in a cheap nightclub. Eventually, I fell in with a narcotics ring that was operating in the city. Last month, in one swoop, the police arrested 11 out of 15 members of that ring, including the top man. The whole thing was then revealed as a police trap. My partner and I had volunteered to endure six months of public disgrace in order to bring to justice a narcotics organization which had begun to push soap even among the children in the city schools. Signed, Bobby Hill. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Bobby Hill. Undercover policemen did a remarkable thing. We'll start with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. Well, whichever you are, congratulations. It must have been a terrible experience. Number three, when you, how did you manage to get arrested for drunkenness and disorderly conduct? In full public view? Uh, no, this was arranged. Oh, you mean nobody, nobody saw you doing it? it just, not... Uh-huh. But actually. then, number two, your family found out about it. Oh, well, uh, we had to tell our family what was happening. I, and they kept a secret. You well, see, women not, can not, keep secrets. Not the, what the actual plot was. We, we told them we were dispersed from the force. Thank you. Number one, how much does uh, uh, whatever they take in to, to give to children, how much does that cost for a fix? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Yes, ma'am. Uh, number three, when these children buy it, how do they pay? They have numerous ways of paying, mostly by stealing. Mostly stealing. Right. Tom Poston. I, I'd like to ask number two if you were uh, a publicly arrested. Yes. That's different from number three's answer, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, then when you were arrested, were you in a condition of intoxication at the time? That's correct. You had managed to actually drink at a public place? That's correct. And then what happened? What were you fighting? And what did they arrest you on charge of? We created disturbance. Created disturbance? Yes. Number one, was there more than one person involved in this? Yes, sir. How many people were arrested and th discharged dishonorably from the police department? Two, sir. Two. And you were both together drinking at this time? I was by myself at a different place drinking. Oh, you were both thrown out? Gee, that's really exciting. Oh. Peggy Cat. Uh, number two, did your partner get a job uh, in the underworld, too? Yes, both of them. Uh, number three, what is horse? Heron. Uh, number one, what's pot? Marijuana. I beg your pardon, but this number one. Yeah, number one. one, pot is marijuana. Uh, number, number two, how much do you think it costs to get a fix of heroin? 
Well, it runs between $25 and $50, depending on how much is cut. And uh, number three, how much would it cost a day to maintain yourself in this habit if you really were cooked? That depends on the individual. Uh, number one, did this story get in the newspapers when you were pinched? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, sure, it has. I feel like a control. <clears throat> and uh, number uh, three, uh, this narcotics ring, was this in uh, Nashville? Yes. And did it have any connection with a nationwide ring of any kind? Yes. Are you at liberty to say what the connection was, or what was it like? The, what they call the syndicate, or any of that? I don't know. You don't know what the connection was, but well, how do you know that then there was a connection between other cities than Nashville? You were told this, or what? Yes, I. We received information. And number two, uh, do you feel that your life is in danger now? I mean, is there going to be any revenge? I hope not. <laughs> Number one, have you had any threatening uh, calls or letters or any indication? No more than usual crank calls. How many men are in jail? Is there... That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. It is a fantastic story and one that we would like to pursue further if we had the time, but we must mark ballots now, so will you kindly do so? Vote at once, without change, no consultation any more than any other time, and simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? All minds made up quickly. Very well, Tom, for whom this time? Well, I, 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 <clears throat> I thought they were all great. I would have believed any of them. But I, uh, I think that if they did this, they must have screened their force to find a guy that would look uh, you know, like he would be uh, in disgrace. So that's why I thought number two looked disgraceful. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I seriously <laughs> voted for him because I thought he looked like a good actor, and I think he could get away with it, and he did. Peggy Katz. Well, I voted for number one because I was thinking... Oh, oh I voted for number, for number one because I was thinking, which one of those three guys would look as though he worked in a nightclub? And I picked you, number one. <laughs> Very well, may open up a whole new career. Horses. I voted for number three. He looks like a cop. I mean, I, he does. I've seen those eyes when I was saying, what officer, 50 in a 45-mile zone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have your choice of pairing up with any one of the three. There's a vote for one, a vote for two, and a vote for three. Which will it be, Kitty? I'm pairing up with Orson. Uh -huh. Because I think they were all extraordinary, and I would have believed any of them. I think any one of them was perfectly plausible and wonderful for this job. But I agree with Orson. I think number one looks like that fellow that you try to talk your way out of something. <laughs> and he has an enormous amount of determination in his face, and I think it's he. Number one, you just said. Uh, no, no, number three. You meant number three. Number three. You just said it about well, number one. They're all wonderful. All right, so there we go. The vote's into the minds made up. Now, find out which of these three gentlemen is the real undercover policeman. Uh, first of all, let me say that the trap which uh, caught the 11 members of the narcotics ring was entirely the, the idea of a division chief of the Nashville Police Department. We can't think of anybody better qualified to pick out the real Bobby Hill than that very man, Chief Donald Barton. And here he is. Well, Chief, may I say not only thank you for helping us with our show, but congratulations to you and your very fine staff for a job extremely well done. Thank you, Bert. You must have been very proud of that. And let me just say uh, that we're as proud of you as we can be, Bobby. Believe me, we know what you must have taken to go through that and bless Thank you for it. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Richard Clark. I'm president of my own consulting firm in New York, personnel consultant. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Bill Mantlow. I'm an assistant manager of Bankers Trust Company. <laughs> Gentlemen, we find that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each. It's a nice round total of $500 from Winston Cigarettes and a carton of Winston's on your way out. And our sincere thanks go with you for having made it a very happy evening. Good night, and God bless you. We'll be back in a moment after this message of interest.
time we have tonight except to say farewell to uh, Peggy Cash, who's going to play stock this summer. She's going to open week after next in Warren, Ohio. Peggy, best of everything. Say hello to John Kenley. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about it. Good night, panel, and thank you for being you. And good night to all of you. We'll kind of see you at the same time next week. And, of course, I'll be with you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, saying good night for Winston Cigarettes. May I remind you once again to tell the truth. Good night. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton production. This is Andy Griffith reminding you that there'll be new excitement in the town of Mayberry tonight on most of these stations. Tell the truth has been brought to you by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for To Tell the Truth. <laughs>